Today I am dismantling my old rucksack which has fallen to pieces and there are some usable bits in this so what I'm doing is I'm cutting off the front pocket which will make a bit of more sense in a moment um, just trying to cut along the seam lines a bit tricky there's lots of potentially useful straps on this and other buckles and things like that and I might be able to rescue the zip, the main zip which is left on the main piece so I'm just going to have a little go here because I might be able to make it's a, make like almost like an extra mini backpack out of it or something that I can attach to my other backpack particularly because the bit that I'm cutting out is where I would normally put the water bottle so it might be I can use it to strap on my water bottle and then just use the um, the other pockets on the other one for other things if I need it so I'm just trying to work my way around the zips and then once I've done this I'll show you what I've tried to create it's going to need tidying up I'm going to get my overlocker on this I should think I'm just trying to cut my way around the double edged seams So what I've got here, I've cut this bit out, so what I've now got is, there's two little cute pockets on the inside there, and then I have this one which is where I used to put my water bottle, which also has an extra pocket inside it. And you can also strap stuff to the outside with that as well. There's a couple of straps on the bottom of it, which are still attached to the original um, rucksack and I'm just going to snip those off as well because they don't really go anywhere so I'm going to snip them off at the rucksack because I may well be able to do something with that as well that gives me the two edges there that could be useful so there's that little backpack there um, just wondering what else I can salvage. There's a good body strap. See, these are knackered, but there are elastic guides there and the plastic D rings and also the snaps. So, these, which could be really useful. So, I'm just going to take off some of the because the body straps are absolutely knackered, that's the first bit that went. So I'm going to take those off, two of those, let's take that little strap off as well if I can get it off. That might come in handy, a little elastic strap with a, maybe another end to that somewhere. So let's take off this body strap. This is the strap that would have gone around the waist. So I've got that one with the strap on it, that might come in handy for something. And then we can take that off. So we've now got a pair of those. We can do something with that. We can make new straps if we need to. Let's take off the other one there. That's that one there. What else is left? A little strap there. That will go with that one there. That's that. What else do we have? So we've got the original zip, which will be easy enough just to seam rip out. That's a nice strong double-ended zip 
there. And that's a fun little thing. We'll have that off the inside there. That's cute. We'll have that. I've got these little water bottle holders on the outside, which I would really have liked to have kept those, but I don't know. I mean, little pockets, really. I wonder if I could do something with that. I'm not sure. Oh, and there's a zip at the bottom there as well. Oh, a secret pocket at the bottom there. I didn't even know I had that. Um, I'll probably rescue that zip out as well. the body strap that would have gone there. That's got a little strap and a buckle on that. And then the other one on the other side as well. Right, so that's all the straps and the buckles off, apart from the ones where the water bottles would have gone in there. They were really good. I used those all the time. And I don't think... I don't know how I could utilise those. I will do something with them though, that's for sure. And then there's the little straps that went around the top, which so you could put your water bottle in or something longer and then tie that strap tightly so it didn't fall out. So I've got my little bag there, which goes that way up. So I could do something with that. That's a pretty cool little thing. Uh, got the spare buckles and D-rings and all sorts. So I'll have a little think about what I can do with all that and then I can get rid of the rest of it and not have all the rubbish lying around. Um, I've managed to sell both of my old laptops. So I sold my old Dell last week and I've got a bid in on my old HP Pavilion um, which will finish in a couple of days I think. So that's clutter gone. I didn't feel like I wanted to just throw them out. I just felt like that's not the right thing to do, you know, you're supposed to upcycle them or recycle them or whatever, but I just couldn't be bothered. So I just stick them onto eBay and let someone take them. Um, they've only gone for a few quid by the time eBay's taken its money out and everything, but they were no good to me anyway, so there was no point in me keeping them whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, so they've, one's gone and one's going to be on its way soon. On my last hiking trip where I went to Withens Clough and I showed you that amazing farm and that big barn and then when I came back because it only kind of really makes sense once you've been somewhere and I'd seen the remains of a few derelict properties when I was up on that walk and the reservoirs are really interesting because a lot of them, when they were put in, displaced and destroyed whole communities. So it was something like 13 farm properties were drowned or displaced because of the building of Withens Clough Reservoir. And it kind of ruined the, the livelihoods of the people who were left. So that farmhouse and that barn are the only survivors up around the other side of the reservoir which I didn't go to with the rem are the remains of another property which survived I think until the 1960s and I may at some point go back there and I'm thinking more about doing a few hikes where I focus on going to some of these derelict properties and having a look around there are so many around and whenever I'm doing my walks I always have a look at um, Google Earth a satellite view and have a look and see what's in the area that might be of interest like derelict buildings and there's lots of scatterings of the remains of farm cottages and barns and things like that so I might have a look for that I still have a few hikes planned for the rest of the year and I might try and incorporate some of that and there's one or two places that I want to go back to where there are other routes in the same area which now I'm familiar with where the air, 
with those areas and the car parks and all that sort of thing, I can confidently go back and know where I'm going. So I'm probably going to do that, but of course it will all be weather dependent now. Um, I just, it's just the rain. It's just the rain I need to avoid, really. Even being a bit colder won't hurt because I've got plenty of layers. That's not the problem. Once you're walking, you warm up a lot anyway. It's just avoiding the rain. And, of course, being in the north, boy, do we get a lot of rain. So I think I'm going to have a look at visiting a few of these derelict properties and trying to find some of the history around them and what happened to them and who was there and all that sort of thing. That would be really interesting to have a look at. And just add an extra layer. So I can do shorter hikes, maybe, but with more of a focus on them rather than just walking a route, especially if I'm going back to routes that I've already done. So I think that's going to be a little bit of a plan. And I've got a few ideas for where I can start that. So it's all going to be weather dependent at the moment, but, but um, yeah, I'm excited to do a bit more exploring. I need that at the moment. I feel like I'm at a bit of a loose end. I can feel the seasons change and I'm thinking, oh, you know, things are going to start changing now. And I want to make the most of what's left of the weather before it really, really turns. Today I am going over to Derbyshire. I'm going to meet my best friend who I haven't seen since December 2022 because life gets in the way and because she's quite a long way away and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not going to record any of it because I'm just going to listen to podcasts. It's quite a long drive. The weather is atrocious today. We are in for days and days and days of rain and wind. Um, so I'm just going to do that, going to go off, have a nice day, and uh, yeah, that's about that. So it's Friday morning, we had gale force winds here last night, I got woke up about 5 o'clock to wheelie bins flying down the road. So, uh, didn't get much sleep last night and overslept this morning. I'm going to do something different today. I'm going to go over to Morrison's because today's their last day of their Ask for Ellen. So I think it was last year they did a another one. It was Ask for Ella or Anne or something. I can't remember. And it was jacket potato with cheese and beans free. And this year they're doing Ask for Ellen, which is I think it's I think it's crumpets. So I'm going to go over there and take my laptop and go and work over there for an hour and just change the routine a little bit. Um, yesterday was really nice, had a really good time, lovely day, um, didn't record any of it because we were at her house and her kids there and all that sort of thing, there was nothing really to record, but on the return journey, um, I came back a different way, I didn't come back on the M1 as I normally would because the traffic was slower and Google Maps went to take me through Chesterfield and up through the Peak District, so I recorded the return journey because it's a much more picturesque journey so I've cut in a few of the best bits for you and I'll show you those here now.
I've been looking at buying a few things, a few more things online. One thing I wanted to buy was a um, a blow up, like an inflatable camping mat, something I could lay on my the passenger seat of my car. Um, I also need a new USB cable for my phone because I think the wires have broken and it's not working as well as it used to. And when I was at my best friend, she was showing me her workstation. She's got her own little shed at the end of the garden, which is a little craft shed that she works in. And she had this really amazing like work light, like a focus work light, so you could focus it down on what you were doing. And I'd really like something like that for when I'm doing the jewellery making, because the desk, the stand desk that I've put in my studio is away from the window. Um, so I had a look at it, and it's, it's a really good light, and it's, you really need to see these things in action before you know whether you want to buy them. So I had a look at that, and then I needed another, I wanted a hanging USB bulb for another whole different thing, and I, start, I looked at Amazon, and I put things in the basket, I couldn't decide what to get because there are so many different types of everything, you know. You don't know which is the right one, whether you actually need it. And then I start, and I looked at the basket and saw that it had gone up to like 53 quid. And I'm thinking, do I actually need any of this stuff? What, what, is it, what about this do I need? Do I need a blow-up mattress for my car? Could I do it another way with blankets and cushions as I've done before? Um... And is a like a camping mat, which isn't like a proper mattress. I mean, it's about nine, ten centimeters thick, so it would be better. But is it going to be enough? And I thought, do I need the work light? And the only thing I think I really need is the USB cable. And I've just pretty much put the basket aside and thought, I can't, I can't get my head around it. I can't be bothered to buy any of this stuff. I don't want it. Um, I don't want to spend fifty-three quid on stuff that isn't necessary when I need to keep an eye on the pennies now that I know the rent's going up. So I might relook at some of this stuff again. I do need to get the cable, so I will probably get that. Uh, they're too expensive in the shops, they're like ridiculously expensive. Though I might have a quick look in Morrison's while I'm there and see if I can get one there. Uh, but the ones online are always cheaper, like Sainsbury's were doing them for about 15 quid. And I could have bought it on Nectar Points, but that's a lot of nectar points just for a USB cable. And so I didn't bother with that. I'll have a look in Morrison's. Um, and if not, I'll have a look again on Amazon and then on eBay. There's just too many choices. There's too many things that are too similar. And because you haven't seen them in action, you're not sure if they're actually going to work or you're going to use them. The camping mat would be quite fun. But... For the number of times I'm going to use it, does it matter? I'm not sure. Um, I want to do one more car camping trip this season before the weather really turns. And I will probably before do that before I next go down to my parents at the end of September. I haven't decided where to go or what to do yet. But I am going to plan that for September sometime because I think that will be fun. I could combine it with a hiking day I suppose. That might work. I'll have to have a look at that. I have to investigate and see. Um, so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to get myself organised and go over to Morrison's and take my laptop and treat it like a little office for an hour. I think it'll be fun to do something a bit different. <laughs>
last year I got this free on one of the apps it was either it was probably shot me in but I can't remember exactly um, they still come with the little keys to open them and I've been thinking about it for a while and I've been like hoarding this in my cupboard since last year now they have long shelf dates on these so this one is good until June 2028 but it's been calling me and I really want to just eat corned beef today I love corned beef so I'm opening the corned beef I know it's not the healthiest of meats I can smell it, it smells so good but I like stuff like this so it's been in my stores since at some point last year and there we have <laughs> it's a big tin as well and I've been into the shops and had a look at these since and the price of corned beef, I mean, even the cheap saver brand, it's so expensive. I could just eat this out of the tin. I don't care what anybody thinks. It's good. I'm going to have a bit of this for tea. I'm going to dice some of it up with lettuce and potato salad and tomatoes and kind of be all healthy. It's Saturday morning. Another wet morning here in the northwest. The rain is hanging in there, that's for sure. Uh, I'm just getting ready to go over and do my weekend clean. Like last weekend, I've decided to do it all in one go. I'm not going to go over and do a Sunday morning haul at Morrison's again. I still have quite a lot in. I've got a lot in the fridge, but also my freezer is, or both my freezers are rammed to the limit with where I've overbought veg and I've blanched and frozen everything. So I've got tons in. Um, I also recently went and bought some more milk. So there's six pints of milk frozen in the freezer as well. So that takes up a lot of room. Um, this morning I was having a quick look at YouTube as I was getting ready and Martin Lewis has put out an update on the energy price cap because those scummy energy companies are doing their usual trick and in October, just as people start to need their heating, uh, the prices are going up because they like to make their money and they don't care how much you suffer for it and it's going up 10% in October. And then they reckon that in January it's going to go up again, although not as much. It's just disgraceful, the lack of regulation that they're allowed to just do this. And there are companies offering fixes now, which will get you 7% below that, which shows that they can do without that 10%. It's really annoying. When I go and look at the, the fix options, most of them I can't have because I don't have a smart meter and I won't have one. But also because I'm a low user anyway, they tend not to do much for me. So I'm not going to bother. I'm going to stick with my um, supplier who is out Fox the Market. I have a £40 a month direct debit um, and I will do what I always do, which is use as little energy as I possibly can. Um, I've already started thinking about, you know, kind of battening down for the winter because this week has really felt like autumn. Um, today is actually the 24th of August. So I'm running a bit behind on my chronology for my updates at the moment. Um... I'm going to start posting less because at the moment I've been posting every other day, mostly because I just have lots to add in because I've been doing the hikes. They take up um, more 
space so to speak so um, I don't want to post every day but posting every other day and the amount of money I'm getting from YouTube is just going down so I don't think it's worth my effort doing that many videos so I think I'm going to start making I mean I think my kind of week in the life vlogs are already anywhere between half an hour and an hour which I think is sufficient and I would imagine that as the season progresses I will get less hikes in um, I do have a few things planned but it's all weather based so I'll have to just fit stuff in as and when the weather's okay we might have a good a good day next week when I'm free to go and do a hike I'm just keeping an eye on the weather and seeing what happens um, so yeah this morning I'm going to go over and do a clean I'm hoping there's no one in the office the last Tuesday evening and the last Saturday when I've been there, there's been somebody working late stroke overtime, um, which always makes things a little bit awkward. So I'm hoping there's no one there today. As it's the bank holiday weekend, I'm hoping that people have at least taken a few days off. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's the update. Energy thing just really annoys me because... They're going to have to put all the warm places, the warm spaces back into place in the autumn uh, and the winter because people aren't going to afford, the, afford their, their bills. I was reading an article the other day which I may have already put a bit up here somewhere, I can't remember, which is they reckon a quarter of people aren't going to be able to afford to put their, their heating on or as warm as it needs to be this year. Which is no surprise. Um, I don't put my boiler on until normally December. I can usually get by until December. I've got quite good at um, you know a bubble wrap windows because I have very old, ineffective double glazing here. So I bubble wrap the main rooms, and then I attend. I, I shut all the doors, and then I don't use the rooms. Um, that I don't need to. So I'm hoping to keep doing more making this winter. Normally I stop making stuff because it's too cold to be creative, it's too cold to focus. Um, I'm going to see if I can pull through that this year because I haven't been very creative the last year because I've just had a massive creative block and I've only managed to resolve that in the last couple of months, which is great because I'm making stuff again now. It's really good. But um, I need to play catch up now. So I'm going to try and remain focused. The good thing is I have more things going on this year. So I now have four cleaning clients. Um, I did have three last year, but now I have four. So I have a little bit more focus to my week on cold but nice days I can still go out and hike I will have all my gear so I will have focus to go out and do stuff instead of just hiding in the flat with four jumpers on which is what often happens and I have to stop that because that doesn't help your mindset when it's cold and when you've got a lack of daylight I mean the old SAD thing I don't suffer from it badly but I definitely feel it that semi hibernation feeling definitely kicks in Oh dear, I think winter's going to be a tough one. If bills go up 10%, people are really going to struggle this year because all the bills are still going up. You know, I've noticed, um, I did a, a post not so long ago about how I've been looking at my spreadsheets and now that my, my rent renewal is in, I know how much that's going to go up. So I know how much I'm spending more on my bills every year sort of going forward for the next year and it would be higher if I hadn't really shopped around and got my business business insurance cover down I think I knocked about 250 quid off it by paring down my insurance policy a lot which is fine it was, it was not a problem I needed to do it anyway but yeah so if, if I take that out of the equation then I've my bills have gone up like 630 and I'm still only buying yellow stickers on food. Last year I was spending about £20 a month on food because I buy everything on yellow sticker and discount and free off cashback apps. And this year it's looking at an average of £30. 
and that's one reason why I'm not doing any yellow sticker hauls on Sundays at the moment. I mean, I do have too much stuff in. There's no reason for me to buy any more food. But also, I need to get... Uh, you know, I'd hit my £30 a month limit mid-month this month, so I need to really pare back. Um, and that's despite me not buying all the ultra-processed stuff. My bill is still high. So I don't know. Anyway, so I'm going to go off and do my Saturday morning clean and then I shall come back and get on with a whole list of other stuff that I have to do. <sighs> another weekend is another work day. Today I am going into town. I'm treating myself to a trip to the cinema. And in case you're wondering how I thought that, I have free tickets. I get free th uh, I get six free cinema tickets every year when I renew my Club Lloyd's current account. I never get through six um, six tickets because there's never enough to watch. I think I've used two. They get renewed in October. I think I've used two, so this will be number three. And I've decided to go and watch the new Alien movie. When I was at my best friend's the other day, we were talking about what cinema and stuff like that. And she showed me some of the behind the scenes from um, from this new film. And apparently they brought the animatronics back. So they were showing one of the alien creatures and they're like robotics. But an actual alien, not a thing made on a screen. So I thought, you know what, I'll go and give it a go. I love the alien movies, but I only like the first three. Everything else is utter rubbish. But I thought, you know what? I don't go out and do this very much. I might as well. That said, I'm hoping that I haven't made a bit of a mistake today because it hadn't really dawned on me that it was a bank holiday. So it's bank holiday Monday and normally I wouldn't go anywhere or do anything because everyone else is out. However, it's also still the school summer holidays and I think a lot of people are away It feels really quiet on the roads this morning. Now it's half past nine, so you wouldn't expect everyone to be out and about. But I'm suspicious that people who want to get away probably went this weekend. However, there is another problem, which I hadn't thought of, hadn't even realised at all. I don't know how I even found out. Is that this weekend is Manchester Pride weekend. So I'm a bit, a bit concerned that Manchester might be a little bit on the busy side. Um, although all the big events I think finished last night, Monday is a day ticket for Pride. So I think there are probably still a lot of things going on and then people will go back home in the afternoon if they're going back to work tomorrow, assuming they are. Now the place where I park, I always park out of town and walk in because it's free and it's a place I know quite well, is normally quite busy during the week so you have to get there early because the parking tends to be taken up by people who work in all the local businesses. However, Bank Holiday Monday, hopefully most of them are not at work and there may be some free parking at this time. So I'm, I, I'm usually really lucky, I've never got there and then had to come home because I couldn't park. I've always managed to find somewhere. So I'm hoping that I can find a space. Um, so we'll see how we get on with that. I had a flurry of vintage sales this morning. Literally nine o'clock I had three sales come through one after the other. So when I get back I want to get those packed and out the door because it's, they're all going out via one of those um, post-it boxes, so I don't need to go anywhere that's open. 
I also had a sale yesterday, which I took to the shop yesterday morning. So I mean, I've been listing a few new things lately um, because I've been having a little bit of a clear out. And I've pulled out a few jewellery items and things and that's some of the stuff that's sold. So that's good. So clearing out more space, making a few more quid, which is nice. So we'll see how today goes. I've got my coat on. It's, uh, it's not freezing cold, but it's not warm. And the other problem is that they always ramp up the air conditioning in the cinemas as soon as the film starts. And then I sit there and freeze for the duration of the movie. It's always so cold. So I've got a jumper on, t-shirt on, and my heavy khaki coat. And at least I can remove layers if I get warm. So let's let's see how we get on with this. <laughs> it's nice to get out and do something different. I am also hoping to go on a hike later this week. The weather's looking quite good for Thursday. Tomorrow, Tuesday is a work day. I've got someone coming round from uh, connected to my rental agreement. I think it's the electricity check. Um, and they're coming around and do their annual checks. I think that's what it is. But I need to be in all day, so I've put together a load of work to do. Indoors, so that I can uh, just wait for him. He may turn up first thing, he may not. We'll see. So my work week is looking quite busy. Loads of parking. Woohoo! Acres and acres of it. Like a ghost town. <laughs> right, we'll pull up here. That was easy. Tons of parking. I had a feeling there might be. Um, so now I'm just going to walk into town. Parking was really the only thing I was worried about. The walking into town, if town is busy, town is busy. It doesn't necessarily mean that the cinema will be busy. But um, it feels... It feels quiet. So I don't think I'm going to run into any problems. Um, The place has really gone downhill since I was last here. Smashed glass everywhere, windscreens. And it's weird because there's a lot of a lot of businesses here, a lot of people. So I see so much mess in this area. I used to work here. It's been a while. Right, so I'm gonna head into town and uh Get the cinema.
<laughs> I'm back at the car. Done. One cinema ticket used. Three to go. So Manchester was really quiet on the way in. Perhaps no surprise. It felt like a normal Sunday. Coming out, it was really busy, but you know, I'm just trying to get home after that. Parking's still not too bad. Um, okay, so the film. The film wasn't too bad. It started off really well. There were lots of like elements of the original films, like. Um, the ships and the interiors and um, the colony planets and things like that. The cast was really young, like you only followed a small main cast and they were all, I think they were all teenagers, they were so young. There were no hardened space military men or anything like that, they were all kids. Which they've, they've done quite a lot of in some of the recent films. I've noticed they're gravitating towards younger casts. It was alright, it's harder to take them seriously when they're younger because they don't have the same approach, the same way of acting, I suppose. But there were some good throwbacks to some of the earlier films. The aliens were good. So there were proper aliens in it and they were proper aliens and there were lots of them um, you could tell that they borrowed a lot of ideas from the earlier movies the good earlier movies um, which you could tell they didn't really have many ideas so they kind of taken original ideas and reworked them a bit but that was okay and you could see the direction the movie was going in. You could tell where it was going because the plot predictions weren't that difficult. If you know your Aliens movies, then even... I'm not, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but there's a character in it that you could see it coming. A little bit like when you went to see, if you went to see the last Indiana Jones movie and you just knew it was coming. But it was okay. And then in the last, I would say, 20 minutes to half an hour, they clearly ran out of ideas on how they were going to end the film. And they just lost their minds. And they harked back to not so good alien movies to finish it off. So the ending was a little bit of a cop out. They definitely stole from earlier good movies and they stole ideas from NAF alien movies. I didn't mind so much because I didn't have to pay for my ticket. But if I'd been ripped off to the price that most cinema tickets seem to be these days, I wouldn't have been that impressed. I don't see any value in buying cinema tickets. The cinema experience isn't... I suppose it hasn't changed that much. But you don't get more for what you used to go for to get. So my best friend was telling me they recently went as a family of four to see the new Deadpool Wolverine movie. And they spent £120. Because the tickets cost them 60 quid. I don't know what chain they went to. I know some are more expensive than others. Um, and they probably went to a city centre, I would have thought. Uh, yeah, 120 quid, so 60 quid for the tickets, and then the boys want the popcorn, and they want the limited edition popcorn buckets with Deadpool on, which were uh, something like 15, 20 quid each. Absolute joke. And what you get is a tin bucket that looks like a waste paper bin with a picture of Deadpool on it. Absolute waste of money. So they spent 120 pounds to see one film for four people. I didn't buy my ticket. The only thing I paid for was on the way home, I popped into the Sainsbury's local and bought a sandwich. 
which I could have done without, but I got it on Nectar Points, so it didn't cost me. It cost me 35p. Because you can't get anything for £2.50 in the Sainsbury's local, it turns out. So I'm glad I've done that. That's another ticket gone. I've got three to use before October. Can't see me using them somehow. It's very difficult to find films worth seeing. Um, but I'm pleased I did it because the aliens that they did have were good aliens. I generally am a massive horror fan. I love sci-fi, but I'm quite hard to please. So usually I won't go to the cinema. Uh, I tend to wait till things are out on the networks and then I'll get it on a free download because it's easy to find films on a free download. And very often when I've seen them, I'm so glad I didn't put any effort into seeing them because they're usually rubbish. I've been looking at all the horror films and sci-fi films that came out earlier in the year that I didn't go and see. And um, I've been downloading a few and watching them in the evenings. So I tend to go on a binge, so I might download three or four movies and then watch them over a few days, depending on what else is on the telly. And I downloaded, I downloaded Long Legs. And that wasn't very good. Really quite boring, actually. <clears throat> Some of the ideas were quite good, but it wasn't very well put together. And then I watched Oddity. And Oddity was much better. If you like a horror film, Oddity might be... I like the suspense ones. I like the ones where you've got a creepy character, but it's not necessarily blood and gore. I'm not into the, the violence so much. I like the psychological horror, that sort of stuff. So something like um, The Babadook, I loved that. And there's a couple of others whose names, surprisingly, not surprisingly, I've forgotten. And I've been impressed by a few films, but not that many. So yeah, so Oddity was a good one. Long Legs wasn't. Um, I don't think I have anything else in mind to go and see at the moment. We're gonna see what else comes out. The trailers they were showing didn't look that amazing. If I could drag my backside back into Manchester, I might go and see the Deadpool Wolverine movie. I'm not a fan of Marvel at all, but I do like Deadpool because I like the comedy. And seeing these two together, who have a really good rapport with each other, could be quite good. But Marvel just does nothing for me. I'm not into superheroes or comic book hero films. Um, yeah, so I think particularly if you're going to get a nice cheap cinema ticket, you've got a concession, or you, like me, you get free tickets, or you've got some sort of deal, go and have a look if you like the Aliens films. I think it's better than a lot of the recent movies that have come out since the fated Winona Ryder insert. I'm not sure where in the sequence this film comes. I think it's supposed to be a prequel to everything, but I couldn't tell. But you can watch it as a standalone movie, to be honest with you. It really doesn't make any difference. So that was fun. It's nearly two o'clock. So that film was two hours. And I can just about hold it for two hours. <laughs> Time to go home and pack up all my vintage things and send those.